Now the oscillating multi tool is a great tool to have whether for your home or for your business. But there are a number of unusual attachments that most people don't know about. So today, we're going to show you five of those. Let's begin. First up, we have these square slot cutters. These are supposed to make quick work of drywall anytime you need to install some electrical outlets or electrical boxes within. Now you can get these in two common sizes, one for your single electrical box and one for your double. Now if you look real close, you know there's a row of sharp teeth right here along the top edge. But actually, not just on one, it's on all four. So this is gonna be cutting four sides at once. Now I've set up some drywall right here on my bench. We're gonna cut into this for the first time and see exactly how this works. Now, as I was about to attach this, I realized if I put this straight on, it just feels like it's going to be a little bit awkward. I'm going to have to have my arm right up against my stomach here. So I think I'm going to offset this just one set of teeth, and I think it'll be a little bit easier to use. Now, to see how straight I can keep this cut, I'm actually going to take the same box here, and I'm going to draw it out with a pencil, and I'm going to do my best to follow that with the cut. I probably should have known better by cutting drywall you're going to create a ton of dust and that dust well you don't want to breathe it so I suggest wearing a mask and uh, well then making sure you can air out your place in either case that cut out pretty quick so let's take a closer look all right looking at this closely we can see it's a relatively straight cut if you look at the sides here they do waver in and out a little bit that's probably just user error but as you can see there it's pretty straight. Looks like there might be a little bit extra cutting down here at the bottom. Again, probably user error. But I guess one of the main questions is, will an outlet cover actually work with this? Let's see, side to side. Again, there was a little user error. I may have cut this a little bit too wide, but still has plenty of coverage. Now, top to bottom, oh, even better. We have a ton of coverage top to bottom. So a standard cover should work fine with that. Now, if by chance you're interested in this tool or any of the others that will be in this video, I'll put a link to those in the description, so make sure you check them out. Next up is the Dremel Drywall Jab Saw. This is not only supposed to cut straight cuts, but also curved cuts as well. Now if you look at this cutter a little bit closer, you'll notice the cutting edge is on the side that is facing you. So therefore, you'll have to cut as you pull toward yourself. This kind of reminds me of the Japanese pull saws, which make it a little bit easier to have a straight cut. Now looking at the blade a little bit closer, I noticed it already has an offset hole pattern. So I went back and looked this up and it said it's built that way so you can get your optimal cut angle. Okay, we've drawn a little small triangle here to see if we can cut some straight edges, and then we're gonna challenge it with this circle here. Well, I noticed when I was first making the cuts, especially with the triangle, it cut it straight. It definitely made a straight triangle, but I wasn't able to cut through the backside where the paper is on the first cut. Now, of course, that's probably user error. This definitely was the first time I was using this, and I will definitely get better with that. Once I realized that problem, when I was cutting out the circle, I had far less paper still attached on the back. There's a couple spots I still had to go back. Of course, user error. Now, does it cut a round hole pretty well? I would definitely say that is pretty round. No, it's not perfect, but remember, we're using a straight blade, not a curved blade, okay? That is straight, right across there. I did notice when I was cutting this out, though, I had to lift it up a little few times to get it to make that curve started, but that's okay. Again, this is the first time I've ever used this, and I'm sure I'll get much better at it. Overall, this jab saw is a really cool blade. Next up is the Contour Sander, also by Dremel. Now this tool comes with several pieces of sandpaper that fit over these little holders. And if you notice, these holders are different shapes. This allows you to go around circles or maybe in valleys or just tight to reach spaces with sandpaper. Now each of those will then clip into this little holder which fits on your multi-tool and allows you to sand it out quickly. Now these are pretty self-explanatory. You take the cone, you slide the contour edge inside, just like we've done on that one. This is the holder for it. It kind of snaps together, I guess like a compression fit. And then we take the sandpaper with the edge on it. I'm going to slide that into place and we snap it together. It's ready to use. Now to get this back open, I found that it's easiest to do it with it on your oscillating tool. Once you have it fully attached, then you kind of have to grip it, put your thumb right here in the tab and push up. Otherwise, that's very difficult to get open. Now this particular contour edge is meant for round objects, maybe like chair or table legs. I'm gonna use this wooden dial to test it out. Now 
Wow, that was pretty quick and nice. Sometimes we need to get down into the cracks and crevices. This one has a little bit of a point on the edge, so we're gonna try this one. Taking a closer look, these may have been a little bit too tight for this particular contour edge in there, but it did sand on both sides. Now I tested it over here, which is a little bit bigger, and that turned out great. So make sure whatever you're sanding with these, this will fit down in there fully, and then it'll get nice and cleaned out. Now if you have any plans of restoring or just fixing up some old furniture, this is a cool little attachment that should make getting in those convex and concave surfaces a lot easier. So I'd definitely consider buying one of these. Next up is the 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter blade from Imperial Blades. Let's take a look. Now you can see the difference is pretty obvious. This is your standard blade, they're usually an inch or a little bit wider, and this one's 3 8 of an inch. This right here would be great for little detailed work or getting in really tight spaces that this one just can't do. Now let's say we needed to make a small little hole in this piece of wood, your standard blade would just be way too big, so we're gonna try the smaller one. Now this wood did wiggle around a little bit. I should have clamped it down better. But overall, that hole came out really nice. So if you need to do any detailed work or get it into really tight spaces, that should be a great blade to buy. Last but definitely not least are the oscillating finger attachments. These are great for sanding, especially in tight corners or just tight little places. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. But I just want to make sure you're aware that these come in a variety of different types. Now this particular one just has a Velcro attachment on the back and it comes in a variety of different grits. Now there are two other versions of this tool. One of them is coated in carbide and it's great for rough surface prep or getting out maybe some of that grout. And there's one that uses diamond polishing pads. This is great for polishing detailed, maybe stone or concrete, but they are much harder to find and very expensive. I'm gonna mark up this corner that you won't easily be able to get into with any other type of sander. Let's see how well this works. Wow, now that was quick. So make sure you go out and grab one of these finger sanding pads as well. Now please keep in mind that whenever you're buying attachments for your oscillating tool, not every attachment will fit every major brand out there. So just do a little research and make sure these will fit yours before you buy them. Otherwise, I hope you can get out of your shop and have fun building.